I just recorded a whole bunch of stuff and the camera wasn't recording. Anyways, I hate redoing things because like my initial reactions are like fake. So what we're doing today is we're gonna work on a joystick. Actually two of them. I went over there and grabbed them and I made some joke about finding these two rats in the backyard and carrying me in here by the tail. Um, but one of these is from a friend's chair. It's actually the same, pretty much same drive system as this hot pink Invicare right here. There it is. That's the one, that's the one I've been using as a soccer chair and that's the one I also programmed or used in the MK6i programming video. But, uh, see it's this one here. This is the uh, MK6i control system, so MK6 MP MPJC, which designates that it has a color screen, C for color. Uh, supposedly the screen on this just is completely white and doesn't show up anything. Chair still drives, but no screen. Not the most awesome thing in the world. This one is MK6i as well, but it's the MK6 MP MPJ. This one just has a grayscale screen. Still has the SD card slot on it, as does this one. But you gotta have the screen working to do the programming. So we're gonna tear this thing apart, see what's going on inside of it. Looks like it's got some security Torx fasteners holding it together. They are both made out of metal. Um, I did a scratch test when I wasn't recording a minute ago, but I'm not gonna do that again because it's kind of irrelevant. But uh, yeah. So, first thing to do is verify the customer complaint when you're diagnosing problems. So, I'm gonna drag that other... Hang on, let me move this heater. The cords are banging against it. This is the Mr. Heater dual propane tank portable heater with a built-in fan. I think the batteries are dead. Super handy if you're running around outside and you don't wanna freeze to death in the wintertime. We'll be using this thing pretty heavily in the coming months here. It's supposed to be like 22 degrees tonight, so yeah. So I'm gonna pull that other chair over here and then we are going to plug in the joystick, verify what's actually happening. Not that I don't believe you, John, it's just better to see what's actually happening before you dig into things and uh, maybe potentially you didn't need to, but yeah. So these chairs control systems have a couple different style of connectors on them. Some of them are this uh, weird flat sandwich of pins with these little retaining clips on them. One side's male, one side's female. Uh, usually you'll have these if you have power seating on your chair as well. Um, and then the other style, point the camera. The other style are not in frame. Ah, there we go. The other style are um, these ones here with just a quick release type of connector and uh, with a quick release connector and four pins. It uh, looks like there's six connection points but two of those are actually latches so hold the connector together. Luckily this chair has both styles on it which is super handy uh, for um, diagnostic purposes. Oh that's the other thing when you're pulling these clips off a lot of times they'll break. Um, they slide off the end but Anyway, so I've got the chair powered off. We're gonna go ahead and separate um, some of these connectors. Can't tell which one's which. So we'll just pull the uh, pull the clips off of here. And then there's a little end. Did I just break one? There's clips and then like an end cap plug. I think that went under my chair. I'm gonna run it over. Yeah, so they have these sort of like weatherized rubber caps that go in there. But yeah, they all stack together in this weird little sandwich. After you get all the clips off, they just, um, well, not with one hand, but they pull apart. So we're gonna separate these two. There we go. Then I need to sort of trace out the wire and figure out which one goes to where. In theory, we can, I know you can't really see anything, it's all backlit and the chair is black, but in theory, we can just stack these two together. Then we can turn this on. Oh look, the screen's white. Will the chair move? No. Wait. Normally I have to push this button once 
to accept a warning and then push it again so I'm sure. Okay. I'm not getting anything. But as you can see, the screen is white. So let's plug in this other one. And that's the other thing too, I'm not sure if these all are compatible firmware or not. Plugged in the black and white one now, and as you can see, it's powering up. And it says we're missing some modules, which that's a programming glitch. Oh, and it's not gonna let me press reset. Normally this is reset. Okay, so the firmware on these joysticks won't let me won't let me pass this screen. Okay, well, whatever. Oh, interesting. When I turn it off, it doesn't turn off. Oh, actually. Oh, there we go. There's some uh, some Cheetos crumbs down in here or something. This joystick did come out of a dumpster, and that's the first time I powered it up, so it wouldn't be surprising that it is kind of messed up as well. Maybe this button's broken. That's why it ended up in the dumpster. But let's take these things apart and see what's going on inside of them. Move this thing out of the way for the time being, though. So this one, normally when you turn it on, let's see, reflection, there we go. It comes up and it's like, oh, hey, you're missing stuff. And then it's like, warning, this chair is tuned in a way that might break you. So you have to accept that. And then it will move out of the way thusly. Um, need to move a couple of chairs. I got to grab some tools that are in there. As more and more people start watching these videos, I may have to repeat myself a little bit more on some things because you can't expect that everyone watches all the videos. <laughs> but one of the main questions I get is, why do you have so many wheelchairs? Slash, why don't you give them to people that need them instead of hoarding them? Easy. What we're doing right now is a great example of that. I wouldn't be able to repair this joystick if I didn't have a chair that was compatible to plug it into. So, repair, research, training, all that stuff. We're gonna use the proper toolkit because this thing is dingly and stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the main reasons. Having all these chairs in stock lets me have pretty much, pretty much every variant that's out there or almost every control system that exists for the complex rehab seating chairs which are like the group three ones uh, chairs that have power seating I do have a few of the group one chairs that are just basically like scooters with van seats on them um, actually there's one of you I still need to buy the Lynx programmer from <laughs> uh, I keep forgetting about that but Having all that stuff around lets me test different mods and fix things and teach people how to do stuff. Because I get messages all the time from people saying, oh hey, how do I do this? There was actually a pretty obscure one the other day for a Quickie Pulse 6. And uh, there aren't a lot of those chairs running around, but I happen to have two of them. <laughs> one of them is a functional chair that I loan out to... Uh, a friend occasionally when his is getting work done on it. And the other one is actually over here with a uh, six kilowatt generator mounted to it. Uh, there we go. You can see there's a big yellow generator and then it appears to have a wheelchair attached to it. Um, I did that because those generators are big and heavy and difficult to move around. There you can see there's the joystick on it. And that joystick looks kind of weird because that power base I also used for one of my earliest videos when I was making a remote control leaf blower. <laughs> Anyways, there's reasons for having a garage full of wheelchairs. All right, I got one more screw left here. I've actually never seen inside of one of these before. All right, let's see what sort of magic is hidden inside this thing. Apparently there's a sticker on the front. It kind of holds it together. Come on, sticker. There we go. Oh, wow. This is, like, seriously metal. It's just all cast. All right, let's pull this header off of here so we can separate the two halves. I don't know if you can see here. See this little circuit board here? If I just grab a hold of this and pull, we're liable to snap that circuit board in half. 
So I need to support this with my other finger and then sort of gently uh, wiggle this thing out of here. Unless I'm... Oh, I lied. We'll pull it off at this end. Uh, focus. See this end right here? This is much better. It's supported much better. There we go. So yeah, don't grab a hold of that and rip it off. You'll break that little circuit board in half. It's soldered directly onto the charging uh, uh, receptacle there. Looks like this thing has a battery inside of it. That's really interesting. Oh, one thing about MK6i, M MPJ, C, and plus, and non-C. Anyways, all the, ones that look like this, all the ones that look like this, the programming or the tuning is actually housed in the joystick. So if you were to swap this over to another chair with assuming firmware and everything's the same, your programming will also be the same. This thing houses all of that. It's not like the Rnet ones where it's housed in the main power controller. But uh, yeah, so there's that. Looks like we've got some different designs here, even from the Rnet stuff. Our joystick gimbal looks to have four magnetic coils inside of it. You can see them poking through there. Uh, so it looks like they might be using a slightly more robust version of what Permobile just uses a single magnometer for to detect deflection on this. So that's kind of cool. They've got some little uh, processing ICs on there as well. Um, our Input mono jacks have their own little daughter board in here that's connected with a separate harness. I don't know if you can get parts for these, but I mean the thing's pretty modular and it looks like stuff can kind of be replaced. So what I'm interested in is right here. This is our screen ribbon cable. And the first thing I want to do is inspect that. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Sometimes fixing LCD screens like this can be as simple as disconnecting and reconnecting that connector because you get a little bit of corrosion in there. So I've got a very small flat blade here. We're gonna flip open this little hatch. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing apart the rest of the way though just because I wanna see what's in there, but to do that, we have to remove this. Normally you wouldn't wanna use metal on this because you can tear your ribbon cable, but I'm just gonna be really careful. This little latch here just flips up like that. And then, this cable will slide out of the holder. I'm gonna hold off on sliding that out though. First off, we're gonna take all these screws out on the corners and uh, lift this board up and out. And as I do that, that cable should come loose. All right, looks like we got the same screws, the same torque size that holds the circuit board on here as what also holds the joystick together. Screws do appear to be different lengths though, so make sure those are sort it into a separate pile. Don't want to long screw this thing. I don't know if that'll actually damage it, but hey, you never know. Okay, so it looks like those two screws are the only thing that holds it on here. So I'm gonna sort of lift this up and back and then, yeah, it looks like this cable for the screen goes underneath here. So I'm just gonna grab under here with my finger and gently pull that out of the socket from the underside of the board. There we go. Now that just popped through and you can see it right here. And I've got a few other connectors on this board I'm gonna take off so we can completely remove this and get down to where the screen's at. So got that one. And this one. Oh, these things are tiny. And I'll just go ahead and pull them all off of here. Okay, those have a different number of pins. I was just verifying before I disconnected them that I couldn't accidentally plug them back into the wrong port when I'm reassembling this. But a little trick you can use also is note the position of the wiring. If you see this one here is sort of bent down, this one's poking up. So as long as you don't disturb this, you can look at that wire routing and uh, pretty easily determine how things go back together. So we have our screen down in here. You can see our ribbon cable goes down underneath and then there is a connection point here that's permanently attached. This is the screen itself. And it looks like this housing here needs to come off 
that's actually what holds the screen in. You can see these little detents sticking down on each side, and those are holding the screen in place. I would assume there's like a rubber gasket or something on the back of this that it's riding on, but let's pull out these screws here. And these are a completely different thread pitch, so once again, don't mix up your screws. Oh, actually, it looks like the front panel comes off. So it looks like this whole front section here, see how there's a seam all the way around? It looks like this whole front section is now what pulls off. And those screws, yeah, we're going into that. So we'll very carefully go around here. Oh, it looks like... So it looks like this button is through hold on here and it's got a fastener on the back of it right here. See that little jam nut on this red thing? So we're gonna need to take that loose, I think, to get the screen out. Some convenient pliers right here. So we're gonna carefully reach in here without damaging our screen cable and loosen this just enough so that we can turn it the rest of the way by hand. And now we can just unscrew this the rest of the way. And our button should pop out through the front. So it looks like the two wires that connect the button are zip tied in place. Let me grab some cutters. I'm glad they weren't soldered in place. Some of the stuff inside the Arnet joysticks that Permobile uses, the wires are permanently soldered on. So it makes it a little bit tricky to disassemble things, but this just has one itty bitty zip tie right here. So you can just carefully trim that. And our wires are now separate from the loom. So we should be able to wiggle this thing out through the front now. Might take a little bit of persuasion with the pick. There we go. Oh, and we actually have an O-ring. Yeah, there's an O-ring sealing this as well. Let me pull that off with the hook first. So we've got the nut holding it and an O-ring. So there's a slight bit of weather sealing going on here. As you can see, the front just fell out once I took that apart. So here we have our LCD screen assembly with dangling button. And it looks like I've got some retaining clips that hold this in. This would be a perfect application for my desktop microscope or the fake microscope, but it's in a box over here, not really set up yet. Yeah, there's already a few cracks on here. Shouldn't necessarily affect the screen's operation, though. Yeah, it looks like our screen might be uh, glued in here. It's not a good idea to pry on the corner of LCDs, because they tend to break. Okay, I've decided I'm not taking this out of here. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is plug this thing back together. I'm not gonna put it all back into the unit, but I'm just gonna hook this up and see if uh, connecting and disconnecting that connector had any effect. I don't see any corrosion on the terminals on here. Everything looks like it's okay. But these LCD screens do have a finite life, so maybe it just burned out. Anyways, I'm gonna stick this back together real quick and then we'll test it. I've put just enough screws back in this thing to hold it together so nothing will short out. Except for missing half of it. Oh, I guess I have to hook this part up. Otherwise, I can't plug it into the chair. Take two, I've put just enough stuff back in here so that we can plug it into the chair and see if there's any change with our screen now that we have plugged it in and unplugged it. All right, let's see what happens here. So the screens and the backlights on these do generate a fairly significant amount of heat. And that plastic bracket that I took off was all cracked and looked like it had been damaged from being too warm. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if our LCD driver board is just completely toast or maybe the screen is toast. Because our backlight's on full brightness and we're not getting anything on there. So... Yeah, I don't think there's necessarily anything I, I can do at this point without parts to repair it. So, I think what we might do, um, just to get him going, is uh, loan him this thing to use. I actually didn't know I had this. <laughs> I found it the other night digging through things. It's a grayscale one, but 
I mean, it's still compatible with everything. You just don't have the color screen. Um, so I think that might be the best option for now. There is one thing I thought of actually. That little battery in there. I want to check and see if that battery's dead. I don't know if this thing's like a computer and you know, like in computers when the CMOS battery dies on the motherboard, I think it's working. So uh, let's grab the voltmeter here, pop this battery out and check that just to see if there's any, any potential correlation here. A little three volt, uh, 1632 is the model on this. And it looks like our battery is fine. Uh, you can see there 2.9 volts. I wonder if this is a rechargeable battery. Sometimes they have a uh, BR. Sometimes they use little itty bitty rechargeable ones. Uh, I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna type in this part number here on the old gargler and see if we can figure out real quick what this thing is and if it is a rechargeable. Cause it's interesting that it's completely full. I don't know how many years it's been in here, but it's been a while. Yeah, lithium carbon monofluoride battery or BR. Uh, high temperature, blah, 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 fluorine gas, graphite powder, low to moderate current applications, backup batteries, aerospace applications, marine missiles, artificial cardiac pacemakers, operates up to 80 degrees centigrade, very low discharge rate. Ah, they are in fact non-rechargeable. I wasn't sure, I hadn't seen the uh, BR designation before, but uh, it's basically just a really super reliable battery with a very low self-discharge rate that can last for years and years without being used. So, oh, now that you removed the battery, we're resetting this thing. Let me, um, we're unhooked from the chair. I'm gonna short our uh, power pins together just to make sure everything's drained out of it and see if resetting it has done anything. Of course, now potentially we've lost whatever programming this thing might have, but eh, it's broken anyways, so. So I'm just gonna short directly across our input power here on the charging jack, and in theory, turn the switch on and off too. In theory, that should get rid of any residual charge we might have in here. And we'll pop the battery back in. Might as well put the rest of the screws back in this. And then uh, let's hook it up to the chair again and see if uh, doing a full reset on this makes any difference whatsoever. Oh, I still have to take that back off to put the button back in. All right, let's give it another power up here. Full white screen. Let's see if I can gently poke at this cable for the LCD and see if anything changes. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be any change. Let's give it the old, uh, well, as Ford calls it, the shakedown test. Doesn't seem to have any effect on anything. Yeah, and actually, as it powers up, you can see the backlight flickering. Well, maybe not because the camera compensates for that, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this thing has a dead LCD. So unless you wanna use it without the screen or unless we can find parts for it, which is highly unlikely, um, might be time to use a different joystick. I think this is also a great time to uh, take a thumbnail picture for the video as well. All the stuff laying here on the workbench. I don't normally put much effort into making thumbnails. I just do an, a screen grab from somewhere in the video, but and stuff like this, sometimes it's kind of kind of cool to uh, actually take a legit photo. And I pretend to try to arrange things. Just had a thought. Since this joystick isn't exactly long for this world, uh, let's pull this gimbal out of here and have a look at it. I'm really curious to see inside here and see if we can take it apart easily, non-destructively, because it does still control this chair, it just doesn't have a screen. So it would make a good backup backup, but I'm curious to pull this part apart and uh, see how much more or less robust, word of the day, it is than the Arnet variants of this thing. 
looks like I can just get away with pulling off this little circuit board here on the bottom with these itty bitty Phillips screws. So let's put some of these tools away and get one of the tiniest Phillips screwdrivers I've ever seen. Like these are seriously like almost eyeglass screws. Mark, is that an eyeglass size screw? That's probably a little bigger, I guess. Actually, it looks huge on the camera, but definitely not a small screw. I'm gonna just pop this off here and see what we're looking at. Oh! Look at the little coils! Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is actually really cool. Um, here, let me set this down. Check this thing out. Out of all the crap that I give Invicare for their products, this is like really skookum. Like seriously. So this whole thing is run on electromagnets. No stupid magnometers. We've got four coils here, one for each direction. Then we have an additional coil here. So what's happening is this coil powers up, generates a magnetic field, and then depending on where this is, these things will pick up that magnetic field. Looks like we got some junk in there. Yeah, gross. Um, oh, I think that's the boot that's torn. This is similar, this is very similar to how a traffic light works. The big coils they have on the pavement generate a magnetic field, and then as a car pulls up, the magnetic field changes, and the computer senses that, and that's how it knows how your car is there. It has nothing to do with weight or cameras. It's just simply magnetics. I can't hold this still enough. I've had enough shaky footage on this channel recently. Okay, so the reason these break so I said the design is very skookum, <laughs> second word of the day, but there's one glaring flaw, and that is we have wires connecting this magnetic coil that moves around. See that? So I'll guarantee you that's the failure mode on these things. These wires become desoldered, then it won't move anymore. But essentially what's happening is this electromagnet moves around, changes the magnetic field that's being generated by these, and then the software on these little chips here decodes that into a usable signal and sends that out to the chair's controller. So yeah, that's actually really interesting. Like, the design is right on, but the implementation, not so much. These little wires are just getting flexed constantly every time you touch this thing. So, yeah, there's that, I guess. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna get this thing put back together. I can't stop thinking about this. If you've got an old Invicare joystick like this and it suddenly stopped working and this doesn't move anymore, if you can, take it apart. Pull this board off. I would almost bet money that one of those wires has become desoldered. Because if that coil doesn't power up, this thing ain't moving. And those wires are just flexing all the way to town constantly, anytime you move. And Invicare actually stopped including IR blasters on these things because these joysticks would wear out so quickly. The technology is sound, but... The way they did it, eh. All right, so I can still, I can still give Invicare crap, I guess. I mean, the thought is there, but eh. So as I'm putting this thing back together, I've noticed a couple of chips on this board that are somewhat questionable. And one of them looks like it's gotten really hot. And it's actually a little bit loose on the board. This one right here. And there's another one over here that looks like it may have seen some act. Yeah, so there's two chips here right next to each other. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. This chip right here has gotten really hot. I don't think I can get the light to reflect off of it. But this top edge of it is all beveled over and this thing has gotten really hot. So I can't quite pull the part numbers off of these things to figure out what they are. But I'd be willing to bet that they have something to do with the LED drive, LCD driver circuitry. And I don't have a hot air rework station, nor do I possess the finite motor skills to uh, attempt to repair like that. I'm gonna go ahead and say this thing is broken. We already knew that, but uh, we know why now, I guess. And it has to do with heat. Um, so once again, nice try, Emicare. Really good concept, but uh, yeah, not so much in the longevity department. <laughs> okay, now I'm actually going to finish putting this thing back together. See, I got the button in. It clicks. Listen. It's a satisfying button push. 
Oh. I just realized I left some screws out. Anyways, I was gonna say, as I'm putting this back together, I'm noticing that... Do I have to put those back in? Yeah, I'll take it apart and put them back in. Um, I'm noticing that this clamshell doesn't have any weather resistance going around the outside of it where the two halves of the metal shell mate together. So it's interesting that there's an O-ring on that front button and the LCD screen seems to be pretty well weather sealed in there as well. But something else where it looks like it's cool and then you dig into it, not so much. Yeah, there's no O-rings or seals or anything in here. Another thing too I was noticing, these wires on the side of the joystick have some pretty hefty interference on the side of this metal casing as well. So they got like 70% of the way there, and then they just kind of gave up on the last little bit with the design elements on this thing. It would it would appear, uh, it would, yeah, it would appear as though, uh, whatever words. Um, let me stick these two two screws back in here. These ones that hold the front screen on. I got two of the four in. I noticed them sitting on the desk. Since I know you're watching this, I'm not leaving any screws out, John. Oh, and they also. Looks like they had some issues. You see this little piece of plastic right here? Looks like they had to stick that in because occasionally the bottom of this board might have been rubbing on the case in previous models. So it looks like they updated it by putting that that um, little sticker in there to keep the board from shorting out. It's interesting when you see things like that and you know it's there for a reason. It's plugged into the chair. Let's fire this thing up one more time and verify it's still working or broken or whatever. Lights up. Yeah, chair still doesn't move. Eh, whatever. I think we're done with this thing. And that's pretty much where I stopped filming. Um, I was going to include this footage of the joystick in another vlog, but I figured it warranted its own separate video, uh, just because, I don't know, it's kind of its own topic matter. I'm trying to search through a longer vlog, trying to find little bits of this might be annoying. I do have a whole bunch of stuff filmed. I've just been a little low on energy the last couple of weeks. So, uh, moving a little slowly here. But, tomorrow uh, I'm going to be working on getting the next vlog all set up, and then day after tomorrow, uh, there should be another video. I've actually got some stuff that's almost a month old now that I haven't used yet. So, uh, yeah, slowly plugging away. Lots of stuff going on, I'm always filming stuff. Some interesting projects coming up. I was gonna write down what they were so I could tell you, but I forgot. Uh, I just remembered. I finally got a new radiator for the van, and I've gotten the old one out, the new one's not put in yet. That'll probably be over the course of two different videos, and also some more transmission stuff and air compressor repairs. Which is funny, because I already made a video about repairing the air compressor and repairing the transmission. But we're doing them both again. Anyways, whatever. Uh, Let's see, this is Saturday. So, Sunday or Monday, there'll be another regular vlog style vlog. There's gonna be videos, there's always videos, there's always random stuff, I have no idea what's coming next. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully it was helpful and or interesting. Hopefully the camera framing allowed you to actually see what was going on. Um, I don't think Invicare is still making these joysticks. I really wish there was repair parts out there for them, because I find them at dumpsters all the time. And I might actually start buying them on eBay now. Do not buy them on eBay. I want to. Don't steal them from me. <laughs> I'm going to buy them and fix them. Although, I don't need a bunch of those joysticks. Eh, do whatever you want. I'll see you guys later. Bye.